When you shoot with a camera or a phone, you don't always get a perfect exposure. A photo may come out too dark or too light, or it may lack contrast and look dull, or it may be too contrasty and have really dark darks and bright brights. The simplest way to correct exposure problems like those is with a brightness contrast adjustment. Let's try it out on this image from the practice files for this tutorial, or on a slightly dark, slightly dull photograph of your own. First, take a quick look at the Layers panel and make sure that you have the layer with the photograph selected. When you are working with photographs, often you'll have only one layer. Then, go up to the Image menu at the top of the screen, and from there, go to the Adjustments category. We're going to try the first adjustment, Brightness Contrast. That opens this Brightness Contrast dialog box, which I've moved over to the side so we can see the image. The fastest way to make a change here is to click the Auto button. That would move the brightness and contrast sliders here to where Photoshop thinks they should be. But if you want more control, you can move the sliders yourself. The brightness slider is sometimes all you need. It controls the overall lightness or darkness of an image. For example, if I drag it to the right, notice that the photo is getting brighter. If I were to go to the left, the photo would be darker. I'm going to take it to the right of where we started, which was zero, brightening up the photo quite a bit. By the way, don't feel that you have to use the same values that I'm using, either in this video or anywhere in this tutorial. The right amount is up to you and your taste. Now, Sometimes, as I said, increasing or decreasing brightness is all you have to do to improve a dark or light photo. But there's another slider here too, the contrast slider. This slider controls the range of light and dark tones in an image. If you increase contrast, I'll drag the contrast slider way over so you can see what it does. The dark tones in the image get darker, and the bright tones get brighter. Too much contrast like this can make it difficult to see detail in the shadow areas, like in these flowers here or over here, and can cause a loss of detail in bright highlight areas, like up here in the background. So that's what high contrast looks like. Let's go to the other extreme and pull this slider all the way to the left. And now you can see what a low contrast image might look like. A little bit flat, a little bit dull. I'm going to put contrast back where I started, at zero, by typing zero into the value field for the contrast slider. So I think this image could use a little more pop. Therefore, I'm going to drag the contrast slider just slightly to the right, and that will often do the trick. One way to help you evaluate whether your changes have really improved the image is to see a before and after view, and you can do that by clicking the checkbox next to preview in this dialog. So there's how the image started. And here's how it looks with the increased brightness and contrast that we applied. When you're satisfied, click OK. And that applies your changes directly to the selected layer, in this case to the photograph. If you don't like them, you still have a chance to undo or step backwards, as we learned to do earlier in this series. But just to make sure you can always get back to the original, I suggest that when you save an image you've adjusted like this, you choose Save As rather than Save, and give the file a different name. And then click the Save button. Now, a direct brightness contrast adjustment like the one we used is not the only way to correct exposure problems. Later in this tutorial, we'll learn how to apply an adjustment more flexibly as a re-editable adjustment layer. And there are other ways to tackle exposure too, like levels and curves adjustments that you'll explore as you get more experienced with Photoshop. But the brightness contrast adjustment is a relatively simple solution that can often improve the look of your photos. Adjusting the intensity of color in a photograph can have a big impact. In this video, we'll explore how to do that with a vibrance adjustment. You can follow along with this image from the practice files for this tutorial. First, whenever you're applying a direct adjustment to an image, you want to make sure that you have the layer selected that contains the image. Here, we just have a single layer in this photograph, so it's not a problem. But if you have a multi-layer image, then you should check the Layers panel first. Now, let's say that we want to make the color of this weaver's sweater richer or more intense. But we don't want her skin to look too saturated. That's a perfect job for a vibrance adjustment. To apply a vibrance adjustment, I'll go up to the Image menu, choose Adjustments, and here, there are two kinds of adjustments that would affect color intensity. 
there's vibrance, and there's hue saturation. When skin color is involved, or when you need a subtle enhancement to color intensity, then vibrance is the best choice. We'll cover hue saturation and talk about when it's most useful in another video in this tutorial. I'll select vibrance here, and that opens the vibrance dialog box. In this dialog box, you have two choices, saturation or vibrance. You can use them singly or you can use them together. Let's see what they do. If I drag the saturation slider over to the right, you'll see right away that the intensity of all the colors is ramped up. Not only does the weaver's sweater become a richer, more intense purple, but the intensity of the flesh tones and of the loom increases too. And it really is too strong an effect in this photo. So I'm going to put saturation back to zero. I'll just type zero in its value field. Instead, let's try dragging the vibrance slider to the right. Vibrance does a more subtle job of intensifying color and it protects the flesh tones from oversaturation. Let's compare a before and after view by clicking the checkbox to the left of preview. That's how the image looked without the vibrance adjustment. And here's how it looks with the vibrance adjustment. We've managed to make the sweater a stronger purple without overdoing the subject's face and the color of the wood. If you're happy with the result, click OK and go to the file menu Choose Save As, and I suggest that you change the file name so you don't save over the original photo with this adjusted version. So that's how to subtly increase color intensity by applying a vibrance adjustment. We applied this adjustment directly to the photo, but it could be applied as a flexible adjustment layer. That's a topic we'll cover in another video in this tutorial. The Hue Saturation Adjustment lets you adjust not only color saturation, but other properties of color too. And it gives you the option to adjust either particular colors or all the colors in an image. So you get more control over color with this adjustment than with the Vibrance Adjustment that we looked at earlier in this tutorial. If you're following along, open both these images from the practice files for this tutorial. Let's start with this image of threads on a loom. If it's not showing, click its tab at the top of the document window here. Now go up to the image menu and choose Adjustments, Hue Saturation. That opens the Hue Saturation dialog box. If it's covering your image, you can click its title bar and drag it out of the way. The dialog box has three main sliders. The Hue slider controls the overall color. So if I drag Hue to the right, I get a different colorway than if I drag it over here to the left. I'll put it back to zero. The saturation slider controls the intensity of the color. Dragging to the right makes all the colors in the image more intense. Dragging to the left mutes all the colors in the image. I'll put that one back to zero too to show you the last slider, lightness. Dragging this to the left makes all the colors darker. Dragging to the right makes all the colors lighter. I'll put that back to zero too. When you use the sliders as we just did, they affect all the colors in an image. But the hue saturation adjustment offers something more, the ability to adjust individual colors throughout an image. Let's switch to the other open image to see that. I'm going to click cancel to close the hue saturation dialog box and go back to the document window and click on the tab of the other open document. Let's open that dialog box again by going to image Adjustments, Hue Saturation. We've already seen that if I were to move the saturation slider, that would affect the saturation of all the colors in the open image. But let's say that I just want to affect the saturation of the yellows in this image. To do that, I'll go to the menu labeled Master, and I'll choose one of the color ranges from that menu. I'm going to choose Yellows. If I drag the saturation slider all the way to the right, you'll see that it's affecting all the yellows throughout the image. Or if I were to go all the way to the left, you can see that I'm lowering the color intensity of all the yellows. Not only the yellow flowers, but also some of the foliage too, because some of that has yellow in it as well. I'd like to lower the color intensity of the yellows just a little. So I'm going to take that saturation slider and I'll put it just about here. You can experiment with changing the hue and the lightness of individual colors too. Now what if I wanted to change the saturation of the orange flowers in the image? If I go up to the menu, I don't see orange there. 
So rather than just guess at what color range might cover the orange looking flowers, there's a tool that I can use right here to automatically target whatever the orange is in the flowers and change that color throughout the image. I'll activate this tool by clicking on it and when there's a dark box around the icon, it's turned on. I'll move into the image and click on the orange in one of these flowers. Keep my mouse held down and as I drag to the left, I'm lowering the color intensity of the oranges wherever they appear in the image. If I drag to the right, I'm increasing the intensity. And when I do that, you can see that there's some of that orange color, not only in the flowers, but also in the wall, in the vase, and in the table. I'm going to drag just to the left of zero, maybe to about right there. If you look at the Hue Saturation dialog box, you'll see that dragging in the image with that tool activated has moved the saturation slider and it's chosen reds as the color range. I'm going to click on that tool to deactivate it, and then I'll click OK to accept all these changes. And finally, I'll go to the File menu, and I'll choose Save As, and I suggest that you change the name of this image so that you don't save over your original with this version. So the Hue Saturation Adjustment gives you lots of options for controlling color in your photos, and it can be applied as a direct adjustment as we just did, or as an adjustment layer, a topic we'll cover next. If you're comfortable applying adjustments directly to an image, you may want to take things a step further by applying similar adjustments in a more flexible way, as adjustment layers. You can use this image from the practice files for this tutorial to follow along. Over in the Layers panel, make sure you have the layer selected above which you want your adjustment layer, keeping in mind that an adjustment layer will affect all layers beneath it by default. I've selected the top layer here, which contains this small photo of a bouquet. Now let's add an adjustment layer. One way to do that is to go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click this icon, the one that looks like a half black, half white circle. The menu that pops up contains many of the same adjustments that you can apply as a direct adjustment from the image menu at the top of the screen. But applying them from here as 